<clears throat> All righty, Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakalis, Maury Medea, Yahoo, Ben Yashrael. want to welcome you to another live broadcast of Living Branch. Pray is all is well with you. And we'll allow a little space as people begin to log on. And we say Shabbat Shalom to all of our Ms. Bakal all over the world. Both far and near, we greet you in the highest name, Yahuwah Elohim. And we pray that you have had a joyous Shabbat so far. You've been able to do the things that pertain to the Father. And just been able to, in, to really make this day a delight with no burdens. Now, trust me, the enemy is going to try everything he can to bring burdens to your Shabbat. And sometimes it seems like he doesn't act up until the Shabbat almost is here or gets here. Then he raises up his ugly head to try to take the purpose out of this day and make this day about everything else but the Father. But... Our endeavor in everything is to make this day the Father's Day. It's not our day to do what we want to do, but it's, our, it's the day He set aside for us to rest in Him, to do the things that pertain to Him, to give Him esteem, to reflect back, remember His goodness through all the week. So I'm going to share with you an um, interesting dream I had this morning, and I'll just I'll give general, uh, just a generality of the dream. So in the dream, I was doing this broadcast. And various um, things were trying to, or people were trying to, were, they weren't trying, but they were interrupting. And I was able to tell them, hey, I'm broadcasting. Uh, it's live. I need you to, you know, be in check. So it got to this one person and I told them and they refused to listen and they kept interrupting the broadcast. So I told my broadcasting audience to hold on for a minute. And I went over and I grabbed this person up and I I basically told them if they didn't stop, they had better. And I told them I didn't care what happened to my life. In other words, if they wanted to try something, fine. It's, my life is not important. But this broadcast is, and getting this message out is important. So, you know, sometimes we don't always understand the significance of dreams. So I understand that this this broadcast you may not believe it but for some it's a lifeline you know they look forward to it they um it keeps them afloat you know everybody has their different mores that that they can attach to that you know keep them going so for those of you you know uh, that are out there, just know that this broadcast is important. And we're going to try our best to keep things going. You know, uh, even when we have to dig into our own pocket, that's fine. You know, because not always do people support like they're supposed to, but, you know, they want the benefits of everything, but they don't want to, you know, do any sewing. So, we're going to pray, Ms. Baka, and we're going to move forward in the power and the steam of Yahuwah Elohim. All right. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim, the Malik Ha'alam. Father, we give you praise, honor, and esteem. And as we go into this lesson, Father, we ask that you would open our eyes. Make us understand, cause us to have a heart of understanding so that we can do the things that are righteous in your sight, 
that we no longer be henceforth tossed to and fro on every wind and doctrine, but Father, we will have, be on a firm foundation. We will be settled. We will be persuaded in our own mind. I pray, Father, that this broadcast will continue to be a lifeline for those, Father, that are that are in need, those that need the word of Elohim, need the word of encouragement, need healing in their ruach, their spirit. I say, Toda Rabbi, Father, for the words you would give to help us to come out of darkness into this marvelous light. I give you praise, honor, and esteem. In Yahuwah's name, through Yahusha HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. All right. So we got, we got our Mishpachah logging on. This is all right. So I was, um, during the week, I was just pondering, okay, Father, what's our next part that we need to talk about on the in the corruption ser series and I was up early this morning and needless to say sometimes you don't always come early in the week but it was early this morning he told me the heart tongue connection that's what we're going to work on today the heart tongue connection so I want to go just I'm going to start this out a little different. And the reason I'm going to start it out a little different is because I want you to see something. Okay, now when you go back to Genesis 11, Bereshit 11, you know they had come off the ark, but even before, before that, uh, not before that, after they came off the ark, we have this thing, this Tower of Babel, where the, the people, when you read the story, and I'll just you know, go through it briefly. And Yahuwah came down to see the city. Okay, let's go back a little further. Okay, let's go back to the first verse. And the whole earth was of one language, of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from, now notice this, they weren't going to the east. They were journeying from the east. So they were going west. So usually when you see this type verbiage in scripture, it's not a good sign. They were journeying from the east. So the east usually carries with it good things but when they're going west it's usually carrying bad things that's just simplistic talk and they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there and they said one to another go to let us build make bricks and burn them thoroughly and they had bricks of stone and slime had they for mortar and they said go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make now notice okay now remember when Noah built when when he came off the ark he built the altar to Yahuwah now, who are they building this for? Notice their heart and their language at this point has changed. Okay, they're speaking about them being together and not gathering under the Father. They want to make a name for themselves. He says, let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And Yahuwah came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And Yahuwah said, Behold, the people are one, and they have one language. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there come confound their language 
that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahuwah scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off the building of the city. Therefore the name of the city was called Babel, Babel because Yahuwah did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did Yahuwah scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So, notice that their languages were confused. So they had multiple languages. Now they couldn't understand one another and they were scattered. So, <clears throat> from here, we get to, <clears throat> it talks about the genealogy of Shem. Okay, at that point, everybody had, um, since they journeyed to the West, everybody was on a different side. And when I mean different side, they weren't thinking about the things that pertain to the Father. Then as you get back here, and you start looking in the genealogy of um, Shem, you will see here you have Ibram. Or Eber, some some people pronounce it Eber, Eber, and his name in the root. If you want to go to the etymological dictionary of biblical Hebrew, in the root, which is the Ain, the Bet, the Resh, means to cross over to the other side, move to different condition. So. The mentality of the West. Now, isn't that interesting? Even in today's society, the thought process of Westerners, which we are, most of us that are here in the U.S., is very different <clears throat> from those in the East. And the Western mindset will corrupt you to no end. So we've got to, as his name suggests, and it's also the root of the word for Hebrew, Ibrim, we've got to cross over. Because we were in the West, we were abiding in death. We got to go back to the East and abide in life. We got to cross over from death unto life. And you're crossing over from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because keep in mind, they still mix it. You know, you'll have both over there. So it'll look like it's got a religious cloak. And you need to cross back over to where it's strictly his statutes and commandments. Nothing added to, nothing subtracted from. Okay, so that's, that's my introduction. Because when we start talking about this heart connection, we've got to figure out where a, a person's heart is positioned. Is their heart positioned towards the east? Or is it positioned towards the west? Is their heart positioned towards his statutes and commandments? Or is their, it, or their heart positioned towards the knowledge of the of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, they're mixing good and evil together. And sometimes it comes under the guise and it appears to be scripture, but it's not. But when, when you start to listen to the language that their tongue is speaking, the language will tell you what's in their heart. And that's where we're going with this. So let's go back over. That was a long introduction. But necessary. Okay, so let's look here. Here's a decision that everyone that comes into this walk must make. And you have to be decisive in making this and you have to stick to it. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 31, 30, verse 15. See, 
I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love Yahuwah the Elohim, to walk in whose way? His way. To keep whose commandments? His commandments. And whose statutes? His statutes. Whose judgment? His judgments. That thou mayest live and multiply. And Yahuwah thy Elohim shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. Okay. Now notice. Everything there said his. It didn't say anything about your statutes, your commandments. <laughs> Any your ways, everything is his. So the, the thing you have to do is figure out what's his. Because some things that people are doing is a mixture of his and theirs. And he hates mixture. I strictly want what is his. Okay, now notice it goes on. But if thy heart turn away. Okay, now we talk about the heart-tongue connection. We're going we're gonna to see this soon. If thy heart turn away, so that thy will not hear. So when your heart turns away, you stop hearing. But shall be drawn away and worship other mighty ones and serve them. Now, some people, some people think, okay, well, I'm not serving wood and stone. I'm not serving. But you've made yourself a mighty one. You're serving yourself. So you've got to put in the equation that sometimes people become wrapped up in themselves too. I denounce... Unto you this day that you shall surely perish, and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou goest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I will set before you life and death, blessings and cursings, therefore choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love Yahuwah the Elohim, and thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which Yahuwah swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, to give them. Okay, so. We see here the heart is so important and this is a decision that a person has to make and you make this decision every day of your life based on how you decide to live for him okay now let's talk about the power of speech because this is the one thing that would tell what's in a person's heart. And I chose to go to James first. Or uh, Yaakov chapter 3 verse 1. My brethren. Be not many masters. Knowing that we shall receive a greater condemnation. For in many things we all offend. Uh, we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. We turn about their whole body. Behold also the ship which though they be so great are driven on fierce winds. Yet are they turned about with a very small helm. Not uh, whithersoever 
the governor listeneth. Even so the tongue is a small member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed. And have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil. Full of deadly poison. Therefore bless we Elohim even the father. And therewith curse we men. Which are made after the similitude of Elohim. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings. My brother these things ought not. To be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine fig? Or can no fountain um, both yield salt, water, and fresh? So the tongue is a member of your body that for speech that can go two ways is connected to your heart and that's what I'm emphasizing because what I want us to do today is really evaluate <clears throat> where our heart is where is your heart because where your heart is there you know where your treasure is, there will your heart be. So, what do you value? Okay, now I want you to see this as we walk these scriptures, the power of speech. Because some of, some, some of the stuff that comes out of people's mouths, division, causing dissension between the brethren, um, backbiting, Talking about your brothers or sisters. Uh, just, just some of the talk. The negativity. That comes out. I want you to see. That, that all that stuff that's coming out. Is connected to something in you. That is rooted down in the person. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That's very simple. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. What you say will definitely impact. That's why so many times the enemy wants us to say something negative. About what we're up against. What we're going through. Because then he can start to. Feed and give it life. Because death is the absence of life. So he's trying to use things to sap the life out of you. Okay, Jeremiah, unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I have set before you the way of life and the way of death. So remember, this is a choice. You choose what's in your heart. That's up to you. See, many of us are asking, they, we're, our prayer is, Father, change my heart, change my heart, change my heart, change my heart. But you're not doing anything on your end of the deal to, to change your heart. You want him to do everything. Well, that ain't going to happen. You've got to put forth some effort to make some changes. Some genuine changes. To keep Torah. To do what's righteous. And then. He sees you. 
but you want him to come and do everything. You don't want to repent. You don't want to believe. You just want to sit in the box and let him do all the carrying. You don't want to take up your cross or your stake is what we would translate that as. We have new people, so sometimes I use uh, here and there might say it. But take up your stake and follow Mashiach daily. Okay, first, uh, no, this is John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on and believe on him that has sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That's what a Hebrew does. We, pat, we believe the words that were spoken uh, in the Torah, which Mashiach was the Torah manifested in the flesh. And we follow them and we pass from death unto life. Romans 6, 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So carnal mind, those that break his statutes and commandments, spiritually minded are those that keep his statutes and commandments. Go back over to what we talked about in Deborah 30. He said, I set before you what? Life and death. So the death is when you don't keep his commandments. The life is when you keep his commandments. This is all Shaul is talking about. He's not trying to make this a great mystery for you. It's very simple. Now here's, here's one some of us really need to take to heart. In James chapter 1 verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. So you can deceive your own self. Now, just some, just some words on the power of the tongue. I, I wanted to go back through it because we got to put a check on what we're saying. Because if your tongue is, is, uh, is connected to your heart, we got to make sure our heart is right. We got to get the root cause of this. Okay, Proverbs 17, verse 28. I love this one. Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. And he that shed of his mouth, I mean shed of his lips, is esteemed a man of understanding. A lot of people's downfall is they talk too much. They talk themselves out of their blessing. They ruin other people's lives by what they talk about. They talk about other people. I mean, it's a mess. Had to give me a little sip to drink there. Psalms 34, 13. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking God. Psalms 35, verse 28. My tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. So it gives you what a purpose for your tongue. When you speak of his righteousness, not your righteousness, but of his righteousness, when was the last time you praised him? The fruits of your lips. Giving praise unto Elohim. Psalms 39 verse 1. I say. I will take heed to my ways. That I sin not. With my tongue. Now notice what this writer is saying. He's going to take heed to his ways. 
Because we know our ways are not like his ways. So he's got to monitor him. That he sin not with his tongue. Some of us say we haven't done the physical act of stealing, killing, all that good stuff. But we actually have. We've killed people with our tongue. We stole things from people with our tongue. We coveted things with our tongue. Man, we've done so many. We've, we've even blasphemed the Father with our tongue. Yeah, we've done it. We've attributed things that were from the Ruach Kokodesh as the works of Satan or Hasatan. So this tongue is no joke. Just like James and Yaakov said, it can defile the whole body. Psalms 52 verse 2. Thy tongue devises mischief like a sharp razor working deceitfully. And this, this is one of the things that, that really irks me is when people work deceitfully. I do not get on that bandwagon. You know, when, when people um, talk about you secretly, you know, it, it, it's just something else. And, and you haven't, if, especially if you haven't done anything unrighteous, they, they just got something against you. Okay, Psalms 119, verse 172. My tongue shall speak of thy word. For all thy commandments are righteous. And here's the power of the tongue I love. This is the life part. In Psalms 139 verse 4. For there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Yahuwah, thou knowest it all together. Okay, now Proverbs 6.17 tells you about the six. The the things he hates. And look what's included in that. Proud, proud look. A lying tongue. A hand that sheddeth innocent blood. Now notice what he classifies in, in Proverbs 15 verse 4. A wholesome tongue. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. And the perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Proverbs 21, verse 23. Whosoever keepeth his tongue, keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from trouble. Sometimes we open our mouth too fast. We don't, we don't sit back and observe. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You know, the old people used to say, you know, talk about, he, about hearing. He gave you two ears and one mouth. So that means you need to listen more than you talk. And this is what really we should be asking the Father in Isaiah. Yes, Yahoo 50, verse 4. Adonai Yahuwah has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season. To him that is weary. He waketh early. He waketh morning by morning. He waketh in my ear to hear as to learn. I love, I love that right there. Because when you can speak a wholesome word. It's like health. It's like marrow to the bone. When you can speak a, a, a word. A timely word. Some people are just, you can tell their spirit is off because their words are never timely. They're always out of place. They say the wrong thing at the wrong time. And I'm always weary of people that always want to talk and, and not listen. That's just me, okay? Isaiah 54, 17. 
No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt what? Condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of Yahuwah, and their righteousness is of me, saith Yahuwah. Okay, Yermiyahu or Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 8. Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceable to his neighbor with his mouth. But, his, but in heart he lieth in wait. So some people can speak one thing, but their heart is saying another. And we're going we're gonna to talk about that here in a little bit. Now, here's one thing that I always tell people, you know, because one, one of the subjects that always seem to surface at one time or another is speaking in tongues. And people think speaking in tongues is, you know, hey, it, it looks super spiritual. But when you go to 1 Corinthians 13, 1, you'll see that it, it means nothing. It don't matter what tongue you speak with. If you don't have the, the, the love that Yahuwah Elohim has commanded us to have. It doesn't mean anything. So let's read that. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels. Or Mel Melikim, and have not charity. I am become a sounding brass. Or a tinkling cymbal. So, many don't understand that if, if edification is the number one thing when it comes to gifts, not just because you want to speak. If people aren't being edified, then it means nothing. I'll just throw that in there because... Sometimes, you know, it's almost like circumcision. People uh, elevate speaking in tongues or speaking in uh, an unknown language, however you want to put it. They're elevated on high. But actually, if it's not, uh, if it's not being edif uh, edifying anyone with an interpreter there, then it, it goes down to a different level. It's just personal edification and even in your understanding your understanding is unfruitful unless you can interpret all right let's keep it moving so let's talk a little bit about character the heart this is what who is is looking for one of the things in psalms 15 verse 1 in Yahuwah, who shall abide in thy tabernacle who shall dwell in thy set apart hill? Okay. Who's going to be in his presence? Who's going to be there? Okay. Here's an answer. He that walketh uprightly. And worketh righteousness. And speaketh the truth in his what? Heart. So the heart and the tongue are connected okay he that backbiteth not with his tongue nor doeth evil to his neighbor nor taketh up a, a reproach against his neighbor in whose eyes a vile person is contend contemned but he honoreth them that fear Yahuwah. He that sweareth to his own hurt. And changeth not. He that putteth not out his money for usury. Nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. So here's a, a, just a short list. Of the character that he's looking for. And you have to ask yourself. How do you fit 
each one of these little blurps. You know, uh, be critical. Don't don't be easy. Some sometimes we are so easy on ourselves. <laughs> That's what kills me. You know, we want we cry for mercy. Cry for me. I'm not. You know, I'm crying for him to show me. And if I had to have a little pain for him to show me, that's fine. But people cry for mercy because they know they've done something. And, and, they, and they don't want the punishment. But hey, he told us that we have to accept our punishment. Over in Leviticus. So I have no problem. I'm trying to learn. I want to be close. And if it takes correction to get me there then I'm up for the correction. People cry mercy because they don't want correction. Correction requires uh, some pain sometimes. Okay, so let's, let's keep it rolling. Now, this is what I want to, you know, this kind of goes back to last week's lesson. I'm talking about the Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach HaKodesh, set apart spirit, is only going to lead you to truth. It will never lead you to a mixture. When you have a mixture, there's another spirit there operating too. Okay, and we're going to look at this. Okay, let's start off with Exodus 34, verse 6. And Yahuwah passed by before him and proclaimed Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Elohim, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. This is Yahuwah. He's abundant in goodness and truth. The Ruach now in the next verse is called the spirit of truth. It met. Okay, John 16, verse 13. How be it, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of, oh, my goodness. It says that he will not speak of himself. So he has to speak of something. And what is that something the Ruach is going to speak of? He's going to go back to the Torah, to the, his instruction, his statutes, his precepts, and his judgments. That's what it's going to take you back to. So some of the stuff that people are saying that the Ruach is showing them that's not based in his truth, because the Ruach doesn't even speak. The spirit of truth doesn't even speak of his own self. It goes back to the truth in Yahuwah. So when you're listening to people, you've got to become a discerning listener. That's why it's good to listen. When you become a discerning listener, you can pick up what's really in a person's spirit, what's in their heart. What their intent is. If they're speaking of themselves. Hmm. Gotta start to wonder. Because even the Ruach. The spirit of truth does not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Okay, now, now notice what it says. He will guide you into truth. Okay, let's go to Psalms 25, 5. Lead me to thy truth and teach me. For thou art the Elohim of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. So, even the psalmist were asking to be led to his truth. Psalms 26 verse 3. For thy loving kindness is before my eyes. And I have walked in my truth. No, it doesn't say that. It says thy truth. 
Psalms 119 verse 30. I have chosen the way of truth. So this is a choice. Some of us need to make a decision today. To truly walk in this truth. And to, and, and to stop messing around. Because you're going to keep on. Something's going to happen to you. And then you're going to be calling for the righteous. And the righteous will not be found. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Still got some more. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Thy law, or that word there is Torah, is the truth. That's where that's where all roads lead to. Back to his instructions. Psalms 119 verse 151. Thy are near, O Yahuwah, and all thy commandments are truth. Notice what it's calling the commandments truth. Psalms 145 verse 18. Yahuwah is nigh and to all them that call upon his name, to all that call upon him in truth. I hope you're getting this. Psalms 119, 160. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endure forever. 2 Samuel 7, 28. And now, O Adonai Yahuwah, thou art that Elohim. Thy word be true, and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Okay, and then John, one seven, uh, John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now you got to ask yourself. He didn't say sanctify them through the New Testament. Okay, the New Testament is a witness or recording of history of what Mashiach did, his deeds. And, and I don't discount it. But when I, when I see thy word is true, I know he's talking about what's in the Tanakh. The Torah, the prophets, and the writings. I know he's talking about that. And then the Brit Hadashah is a witness to that. So here we go. And really it's talking about, when it talks about your heart, what's the heart of you? It's really your mind. That's the seed of everything. But I, I just put this, you know, because we, we have a picture there. Your mind is what pumps stuff through your whole belief system. And your mind is going to do what's in it. And your tongue is going to speak it. Now I want, want to do something here because I, I thought this would be very, very interesting. I'm, I'm trying to figure out well and we'll see it. So this is the story of Zacharias uh, and Elizabeth. Of course, she was a, one of the daughters of Aaron. And he was also of the priestly order. And they were performing. Um, now notice this. I'll read here. And they were both righteous before Elohim, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahuwah blameless. So here you got somebody that's doing the statutes and commandments. And they had no children because that Elizabeth was barren. And they were both now well stricken in age. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before Elohim in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of Yahuwah. 
And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him a messenger, Melek, Mala, Mala, of Yahuwah standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah saw him, and he was troubled. And fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Yehuchanan, or they put in the King James, John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of Elohim, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Ruach Hokadesh, or the set-apart spirit, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to Yahuwah, the Elohim. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for Yahuwah. Now, this is what we need to see here. And Zechariah said unto the, the, the Melech, Melech, or the messenger, Whereby shall I know this? Okay, now, this whole phrase is a clue to something. And what he answers, For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel, or the messenger, answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of Yahuwah, excuse me, of Elohim. And am sent to speak unto thee to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Now, isn't that interesting? So in this was unbelief. It was in his heart, and the messenger was able to pick it up. And then he couldn't talk until the baby was born. Then as you go on, you have another story. Okay, Miriam. Now, when you read her story, she asked a question too. But her response was totally believing. This is what was in her heart. And Zach, uh, Zacharias, because he was old, because he was, his wife was barren, you know, the years that passed on took, you know, took a toll. I mean, this is something we all got to learn. We got to endure to the end. Simply said. Okay, and in the sixth month, the same, the same messenger, Gabriel was sent from Yahuwah unto the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Miriam. And the messenger came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, Yahuwah is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw it, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the messenger said unto her, Fear not, Miriam, for thou hast found favor with Elohim. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, thou shalt bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Yahusha. And he shall be great, and shall be called the son of the, of the highest. 
and Yahuwah Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Yaakov forever. And of his kingdom there should be no end. Then said Miriam unto the angel, How shall these how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? So this question right here, she's just saying, I don't have a husband, not married, I'm still a virgin. How how's this gonna happen? And the angel or messenger answered and said unto her, The rock Hokadesh shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also the thing set apart, excuse me, that set apart thing shall be born of thee, shall be called the son of Elohim. Behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has conceived, also conceived a son in her old age. This is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with Elohim, nothing shall be impossible. And Miriam said, Behold the handmaiden of Yahuwah, be it unto me according to thy word. And the messenger departed from her. So she had a spirit of, of belief in her heart. So the koi is, what is your tongue really connected to? Because what is connected to, it's going to show. Okay. Uh, look at Matthew 12, verse 34. Old generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth good fruit. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. Bring forth good things and bring forth evil things. So, Whatever your heart has, that's what it's going to bring forth. So sit back and listen. You'll find out what's in a person's heart. Matthew 15, 19. For out of the heart proceedeth. Didn't say the mouth, but see. But look where it starts. In the heart. Evil thoughts, murder, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemy. Blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defiles not a man. Okay, one of my favorites. Uh, yes, Yahoo, Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore, if you who have said, for as, for as much as this people draw nigh with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. And you find that same thing Mashiach comes back and is telling us in Matthew 15, 7. You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy unto you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching from doctrines the commandments of men. So it's very clear. We got to do a heart check. We got to get on that heart machine and make sure our heart is functioning properly. We're going to give you that stress test. Because that stress test is going to tell what's in your heart. So, Ms. Bacar, you might ask, why do I give lessons like this? I give them because I see so many out here. They can study to their blue in the face. They can have all knowledge, all understanding. But if you don't use this stuff and apply it to your life and walk in it, and it becomes a part of your living, then what good is it? I want to be able to live what I study. I want to be able to be a reflection of Yahuwah here in the earth that people will see an example 
And all of us should be striving for that. But some people just want to look good. Or they just want to do it their way. But it's not going to happen like that. If you're going to be over here, it's his way or no way. So I want to pray for you. I want you to, today on this Shabbat, I want you to be brutally honest with yourself. You know, get you a sheet of paper. Write down where, where can you improve. How can you get better? You know, how can you be more like him? Show that you're taking this thing seriously. That it's not just a walk in the park. You know, we getting together and, you know, patting one another on the back. Yeah, that's good and fine, but where can I improve? What is hiding in my life that I need to surface so I can take care of it, so I can get even closer? So I want to pray for you, Ms. McCaw. I, I do like this and teach like this only because I know so many are going to have a rude awakening one day and think they're going to make it, but they're not going to make it. And it's going to be just like it says in Matthew 5. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know you not. And then they're going to claim all the stuff that they did. But see, you got to take time out to know the one that you're doing it for. People want to jump in this thing and start doing stuff. But you need to take time out and learn his statutes of command. Learn of him. That's what Mashiach said. Learn of him. Take his yoke upon you. Learn of him. And most people don't want to do that. They want to, you know, just go into all the revelation and the knowledge and this and that. They don't want to learn. When you learn of him, you're learning those statutes, those commandments, those precepts, those judgments. How to use them in wisdom. That's where we need to go. All right, let's pray, Ms. Baka. Father, I ask you earnestly to look upon my Ms. Baka. Father, as usual, there's someone out there that needs to hear this message. They're struggling in this area. Now as identified, I pray, Father, as they put forth an effort, that you would let your Ruach lead them into this truth. Show them, uncover things in their life that might be a hindrance to them. Father, I pray that the light of the Torah will shine through us so that we can, Father, make correction and adjustments so that we can be more like you. Told our Rabbi, Father, we ask forgiveness for our sins, our iniquities, our transgressions. Father, we acknowledge the sins of our forefathers. We're asking you to restore us to the land and restore us to the covenant of Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. Be with us, Father. We love you. We love you. We love you and we appreciate you. We love you and we keep your commandments. Now, Father, be with us. Help us this day as we magnify and we esteem your name on high. Told our rabbi in the name of Mashiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. I mean. All right, Ms. Pekah. Okay, uh, if you haven't already, go and check out the website. Um, this is available for all of our members to utilize so that you can build your Hebrew, biblical Hebrew. And if you're looking for good resources, this is a good place to go. Um, the Hebrew Foundation Resource Center. And also we have, and, and I say it again before you know it, Passover is going to be here. <laughs> So make sure you, if you have children, get the Hebrew um, Ten Commandments and get the Hebrew Passover story for your children. Sit down, read with them, and observe so that you all can, you know, help them and teach them and train them. Okay, uh, if you want to join the Bookmark of Witnessing team, you can do so by going to our website, bm.hebrewfoundation.org. All bookmark orders have been sent out. Mission accomplished. Okay, and if you would like to support us, you can do so uh, by going to our website uh, where they have all the links, or you can do it by mail. You can use even use Cash App, PayPal. You can use our online giving tool, which will bring you here, and you can schedule your giving. 
Okay, and like I said, the heart tongue connection. So start watching, observing. You will see for yourself. And you will see for yourself what, you know, where a person's heart really is. Whether their heart is to esteem the Father or is their heart about themselves. You'll find out quick. Um, someone asked um, what translation or concordance I'm using. I have a couple different ones I use. Uh, this particular one right here is called Accordance Bible. Uh, you can go to, I believe it's accordancebible.com. Okay, I have another one that I use. I, I don't use it as much on the, I use this one more for research. Uh, because I have, you know, you have so many good tools in here. You know, if I, if I want it, and this is Lo, Logos. And... You know, it has so many, if I wanted to do, uh, say, a study of the Dead Sea Scrolls and, and the Septuagint, I can, I can pull different things up. Like here I have the Hebrew, I have a Discord Bible, here's the Septuagint in English. Um, I can, I mean, it's so much, I can do the Dead Sea Scrolls in the linear. Um, I mean, it's so much I can do with this, this, this piece of um, software right here. This is uh, this right here is pretty good. I like this guy. I got the Dead Sea Scrolls. I have the Septuagint, and then I have the ESV. So I have all those in one. So I can go to a verse. I can see what it says. In all three so I, I like this tool um, but I, I also like according this is more simple to use for when uh, I want to um, when I when I, I use this one for the lesson because it just works better better for the lesson and all these are purchase um, you purchase and you have to purchase the different modules. So if, you, if you're going to invest, it's a good investment. Uh, and that's one thing. Some, you know, you don't have to get everything at once. You can build up over time. Um, so if you want to, you can email me and I can tell you more. But my personal favorite for just studying the amount of resources is Logos and the C first fine um, the C first fine but the only only thing about you know when it comes to the C uh I, I do look at the C but sometimes I want to look at the Hebrew so I can go here, here here I have the Dead Sea Scrolls then I have Dead Sea Scrolls translation. Then I have here the Dead Sea Scrolls um, Hebrew English. So, you know, my 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 study is kind of uh, a little more intense um, when I'm looking for things. I need resources, and so you know, if you just want for you know just casual study and for. Um, for to have the father's name and um, the Mashiach's name, Sefer's good. I recommend the Sefer. I have it on my website. But for those that are looking for a little more intrinsic study, then you're going to have to get software packages. Um, because trust me, it's a lot of books to buy. I have a lot of books, but this is just one convenient place that I can go to. I can't take all my books with me, but I can take my computer, and this has all those books in there. So I hope this helps. And like I said, um, when you're starting out, you can add, you don't have to start out with the big, they got a package that goes up to $60,000. They got one for 8,000. I mean, they got packages. 
So you just start small and just add books over time that you need. You know, this is how you do it because you're investing in yourself. Um, so it's a good way to go. And like I said, accordions is good. I like it. I use it for, for our, um, I use it for our studies uh, because it's simple. But but I definitely like Logos. Okay, because here I can I can bring up and I can have them all connected. I can have here I have ESV, I have the Septuagint, I have the um, the ESV uh, definition. Uh, and I also have the Hebrew. So I can be looking at all three at the same time because I have them linked. Let me link this one in. There you go. So all of them are linked. So if I go to a passage, I can see the passage for all three. What the Septuagint say, what the uh, Lex, what the Hebrew says. So it works out real good. So, you know, you can go to the websites, go to lagos.com, you can go to accordions.com, and you know, you pick the package that's best for you. Uh, there's a cheaper package, a cheaper one that's called, um, you can go to um, eSword. eSword's not bad. I have eSword. I use it here and there. I have it on my um, uh, have it on my mobile devices. Now, the, the, the good thing about accordions and Logos, whatever you have on your computer, you can put the same thing on your mobile devices. So I have it on my iPad, my iPhone. Uh, you can have it on your Android. So they're good packages. Very good. Very good. So like I said, any questions you have, you can just email me at living-branch, info at living-branch.org. Or you can send me a message. Send me a message over on, um, on, on the website. You know, whatever works best for you. I look at all of them. All right, Ms. Bakai, it has been a joy. And we are thankful that you stopped by. So let's endeavor to live righteous. Let, not only just study and grow, but let's live righteous. Let's be more like him. Let's, let's be his ambassadors here on the earth. And restore, be restored to where he told us to be. All right. Love you, Ms. Bacar. Make sure you tune in. This uh, evening at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Fellowship, Path to Yahuwah and Living Branch.